Hi, my name is Kate and you're very welcome here on my channel where we talk about fragrances. I look like this because today we're going to discuss a very provocative, sensual, old-fashioned, sometimes even a little kinky brand, Francesca Bianchi. I'm very excited. I know I've promised you a video for a while. I hope some of you were waiting for it. Uh, if you did, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, stay with me for more. A couple of words about Francesca. She's an art critic. She's Italian, a big patriot, especially from where she comes from, the particular area. As far as I know, she doesn't have a classic perfumer education. When she started making her first steps, her friend and or mentor, Lorenzo Villaresi, very famous Italian perfumer, was helping her to start. I find her fragrances very sensual. There's a lot of life. There's a lot of um, animalic parts, mimosa, orris roots. They're balsamic. They're like almost like caramel, you know, like very sensual. Again, I know I will say this word a lot today, but it's my main association. They have vintage vibe. They celebrate perfumery in its glory. Uh, a little bit old school, good taste though, <laughs> really interesting fragrances. You either love it or hate it, I think. The whole brand, just like Francesca herself, has a very strong character. Recognizable DNA, I feel like if I was blind testing fragrances, I would recognize her handwriting because it's pretty obvious. And I guess let's start because I'm excited about it. As you can see, I already have three bottles here. I will talk about the discovery set because I got this myself. The first fragrance that we have here is actually Angel's Dust and I have it here in a bottle. <laughs> uh, it's actually the first fragrance that I got uh, because I feel like it uh, impersonates a lot of features of the whole brand. Um, if you try Angel's Dust, you will understand the mood, the vibe, maybe some distinctive features about Francesca's work. And I highly recommend to try this one. As far as I know, Angel's Dust means some kind of narcosis. So I guess an opioid, which is already interesting, right? And oh my God, this is maybe the 20s. This is pearls. This is powder. This is a woman who's smoking cigarettes and drinking a martini. Yeah, this smells like powder, this old school powder. I also smell iris, mimosa, rose maybe. It's hard to tell sometimes because everything is compressed, you know? Everything is very, very, the structure is very tight. It's theatrical. It's a lady. It's this black and white movie. It's a pretty heavy fragrance. It's it's not a light one that you spray on Sunday morning and go have a coffee. No, I wouldn't say so. This is like that, you know, it has to, it, it stands out. Uh, it's not like for every every routine moment of your life. This is vintage. This is eyeliner, long eyelashes like this. This is red lips. So just imagine this woman, you know, who's sitting at a table in a cabaret drinking her martini. She has a thick layer of makeup on her face. Her hair is done. She wears pearls. Very old school, vintage vibe, but beautiful, uh, beautiful fragrance. I just, I had no choice. <laughs> I had to buy this fragrance because it has a very strong character. It's amazing. Next fragrance is Sex and the Sea. And this is a Lang Lang salt coconut water, some other tropical flowers. I also feel a little bit of sand, some saltiness of the sand and the kind of the texture of it. It's very strong, very potent. This white florals, yellow florals, this very strong. This fragrance, at first I was thinking to get a bottle, but then I realized I was wearing this and I understood that it just suffocates me a little bit. It's just drilling my brain. But it's very nice to wear outside. I just don't recommend to wear it inside. You know, if you're working, bad idea. <laughs> um, because it takes you somewhere else. It takes you to the beach, to this like 
hot men and women on the beach playing with their muscles, you know, like running this Malibu or something like that. But more tropical, trop not like California, maybe more like a tropical place with turquoise water. When I smell this, I think about this vacation fling with a very, very hot lifeguard or something like that. Maybe I understand what Francesca was inspired by. I don't know if there's a story behind it, but it's also very, very sensual. I like this fragrance, but I already told you that it's a little too heavy for me. And I found a solution. Actually, I don't need this because I have this. Sex in the Sea Neroli. Uh, I like this one better. Because I know that there was a story, I think Francesca found some Neroli oil and she loved it so much and she wanted to use it. She decided to add it into Sex and the Sea. And I love the result because it has similar base, uh, this Ylang Ylang, coconut, uh, I think there's Immortelle and honey, but it smells like joy. It smells like happiness. It smells like happiness on the beach. It gives me a little bit less of the sensual vibe from the first one. This is more fresh and light. Neroli adds more air into this fragrance and it lets me breathe. This one lets me breathe. Oh, oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's also pretty heavy. None of these fragrances are light. This is for hardcore people who like to go all in. If you like very, very light fragrances, you know, citrusy, nothing that stands out a lot, maybe it's not brand for you, but how do we know? Maybe you try it and you fall in love, right? Next fragrance is Dark Side. And uh, listen to my notes. I have notes I prepared for the video and I wrote down my thoughts about each fragrance. So you just understand how much there is. Honey, propolis, balsamic, very strong smell, wax, Styrex powder, amber, gourmand, incenses in the opening, and sweet honey, patchouli, very intense. <laughs> That's, that are my notes. It definitely smells like propolis, like, you know, honey and wax together, a little bit medicinal, and incenses with it. So you understand how intense this is. This is like a cloud that never lets go. It's not like a light white cloud, fluffy, cute. Ooh, no, this is not like, it's a dark, like dark brown cloud around you, very balsamic. The one that you can grab like this and will stay all over you. I don't know why I just have this association, but yes, this is very balsamic and medicinal and strong and I guess that's a little bit too much for me, but I'll consider it in the future. I just, something you need to get used to. Next fragrance, Lux Calme Balupt, is actually a line from Charles Baudelaire's poem. It was inspired by it, as I understand. And it represents this beauty, luxury, glitzy sensuality. It starts with a bitter orange. It has a very, very beautiful opening. And then it transforms into galbanum, this like, you know, green, mossy kind of galbanum with vetiver and fruits. Really, like, it's too much. Like, it's a lot. It's this luxury that's over the top. I, I think it's a very interesting idea, very interesting work. And I'm actually considering a bottle of this. It's really interesting galbanum. And the last fragrance for this video is Etruscan water that is dedicated to Etruscans who had conflicts with ancient Romans. And there's a, a lot of interesting history on that, but I don't want to dive into this. As I understand, it was inspired by old school colognes. But this one, of course, this Francesca, it goes deeper and darker than that. It's... Um, like cold waters and grass in somewhere deep in the forest. It's very green, but it's also animalic to me. This one is the only one uh, within all her fragrances, I think. Uh, even those that are considered extra animalic, this one beats them. For some reason, my nose thinks that this smells like a dirty animal in, in the forest. You know, it's how I smell it. This is grapefruit with galbanum and I think jasmine too. There's a mix of everything in it, but I mostly smell the animalic part and this cold 
mossy green part on it. It's uh, pretty heavy for me to wear. It's the one that I maybe could not really make friends with, <laughs> unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. But I recommend you to try something inspired by Tuscany, where she's from, that, I mean, that area, and Etruscan's very unusual work. I still did not understand it. I still, I'm still trying, but if you like something of this kind, I recommend to try. Okay, guys, these were the first six fragrances that I wanted to tell you about. Meet me in the second part of this review where I'm going to tell you about next six fragrances. Have a good day and bye-bye.